Hi, everybody. Thank you very much, sir. How's it going, Chris? All good? Uh, quite well, yeah. Nice Easter weekend. Had the uh, in-laws extended family over. Uh, that was nice. Yeah, it's pleasant. How did you all fare? All right. I'm now in the struggling to work out what day it is because it's Tuesday too. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, no, all good my end. Cool, cool. Okay. Cool. So we've got a, a fairly light agenda for today um, in terms of new things on there, but we've got a fair bit of the, the usual. So we've got uh, reviewing our actions uh, from last week, a uh, review of outstanding PRs. Uh, Amelia's raised uh, a review for the RFC uh, approval requirements and some specifics on that one. Uh, and a space for any other business, which I see Rams added a few bits in for. Have we got anything else to add at this point? No? Okay, cool. Um, so if we have a look at uh, reviewing the actions from last week, uh, Eric, you got proposed an RFC for a process to add or remove a repository from the working group scope. Uh, yeah, I finally did this. So it's in our set of PRs to discuss. So we could discuss it when we get to that. Okay, excellent. And David, how did uh, working with Greg on the... Um, the plan to get the PRs merged in go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was saying that he was out for a little bit, which he was, and then he had jury duty actually. But now okay. those excuses ran out because he's back today. Um, I, I did comment like a little bit, so I like I moved him along by commenting on what he was supposed to do on them. Uh, but I haven't like actually sat down with them and, and tried to get him to do it. But I am supposed to sit down with him at some point today or tomorrow. So. So give me a little more time on that. Or maybe he'll just take the action because we commented on, on the PRs. Okay, do you want me to move it over or just call it done? And move it over because I'm right, very cool. responsible. Thank you. Okay, cool. And then I'd got an action for the TOC to have a look at the project board to have a think about what we'd like from it. Chops, changes, thoughts. Um, have people had a chance to do that? I haven't, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, as we had a short week, I can always carry that over as a, another one to have a bit of a nosy at. And, of course, that, that does go wider than the TOC as well to include working group uh, leads as well. Right, cool. So uh, if we have a look at some of the outstanding PRs then, so there's the RFC process for repository ownership changes. I will, let me just copy that. I will start pasting links. Okay, so there we go with the first one. Uh, yeah, well, I can, I can speak to this uh, since I wrote it. Um, basically, the idea is, you know, we um, need to be figuring out how to manage the ownership of repositories. Uh, I think things got clearer for me when I realized that we could basically structure that as a partition of the set of repos that the GitHub org owns into subsets that each individual working group owns, uh, potentially small subsets that the TOC and the CF administrative staff own. And then basically two pools of unmanaged repos, ones that are active and ones that are archived. And so then any kind of change to that changes one of those sets. And uh, in general, like the TOC should approve any changes to those sets. Um, and if there's a um, subset of a working group that's changed, then the working group should have to approve that change as well. So then you can uh, I've illustrated a few example cases there like, okay, well, you know, what, what would it mean to that structure to add a new repository or to move a new repository into working group or to move a repository between working groups? Okay, here's who would have to approve. Okay. 
Okay. Yep, so for me, it was easy to understand, and I applied it to my two POC repos that are still <laughs> dangling around and fall into the uh, active but unmanaged uh, subset. <laughs> 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 Let's see what comes out. <clears throat> yeah, based on my looking looking over, I think it's a, a well thought out and, and sensible way forwards. Uh, how would you like to uh, proceed, Eric? Well, why don't we just leave it open for general commentary and discussion for you know the next week or so, and then yep. I'll move to start the final comment period, and then we'll do any formal review of that. Cool. Excellent. So that one's nice and easy. Okay, so then we've got an update for CF on... Uh, Kubernetes working group repos, which is um, mainly here is this is a new one for for this week, uh, which is pretty much aligning with the name change side of things. So uh, I think on this one, we're going to need an update as well to the Cloud Foundry YAML so that everything lines up with all the automation side. Um, so I'm happy to uh, post that accordingly, uh, whether it wants to be added at the uh, into this PR or done as a separate one, I, I think is pretty flexible on that side of things, but I'll uh, post the comment on there. Okay, so we have the next one up, which is an addition of uh, Brandon. Um, there's been a, a thread running on this one to do with some of the test failures, which um, Ruben's starting to have a look at, but he's unable to join today so hopefully you can have a look at later on this one or in the next day or two again i don't think it, it's a, a controversial thing i think it's just one of those uh slight artifact of the complexity of uh, the automation in its current state And then... so, so this is already reflected in the working group charter or what? It's just missing in the technical um, assignment no, to the team? He's not being added as an approver since he hasn't you know, done the approvery things. He's a new hire. And so we're adding him to the Cloud Foundry org, though, so he can have... Ah, oh, that's just the... for the org. Yeah, okay. Yes. What is that? A, contri a contributor? A community member? Something. <laughs> just member, I think. Yes. Yep. Okay. And then the next new one that we've got is adding an RFC for the role change process. Uh, so that's only been open, but uh, already nice and active, I see. So I will just see how that one evolves, really, I think, over the next week or so. And then take it from there. Ah, okay. Yeah, <clears throat> because I had to comment uh, on the other PR uh, because I, I thought it was wrong to edit this Cloud Foundry YAML. That's just the temporary workaround. And I would not, uh, let's say, uh, put that into RFCs. Uh, instead, I would talk only about the working group charter documents. And then I was really not sure if we need an additional RFC uh, uh, for that, or we could simply keep it in the uh, old one. But, yeah. yeah. No, where it for, comes to... for contributors, we have already an own RFC. <laughs> so uh, I think it becomes uh, sooner or later difficult to have an overview about uh, all the RFCs, and we need probably then a lawyer to find out whether RFCs are consistent and 
<laughs> you know, is that what happens when you set up too many rules and don't test them? <laughs> yeah, testing the rules is always fun. Okay. Uh, but yes, that does dovetail into the other one as well. Uh, when it comes to the Cloud Foundry YAML, um, I'm, our expert sadly is not with us at the moment. Um, but we'll just keep nudging him along. I know, I know he's working on it in the background. Okay. So uh, other outstanding PRs of note. Have that one. Which is adding support for opting GitHub project sync for working groups. Um, yeah, this is just a, a general, it's it's still here, really. I, it's for Ruben to just update us on exactly where he's got to with this and, and let us know. So I'm guessing we're going to have to hang this one for another week or so until he's back. Uh, not a lot we can do there at, at the moment. And... And this, I, I I've got a question out of curiosity. Like, uh, as I'm curious, I just follow up and looked into what is that runtime team where we add somebody. Mm. Opening it up shows that it has admin access to 113 repositories in the Cloud Foundry org. What's our plan for a cleanup? Yes. Okay. Oh, I think we we're not pulling one, in. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> we're not pulling in the automated teams from. The working yeah. group charter right now and yeah. basically that runtime team is what existed before so once we get the automation over that one should go away yeah okay then yeah that's that sounds fair yeah it's yeah it's unfortunately two things running in parallel at the moment oh and that's that's been oh sorry i've carried something over by mistake adding the cf test helpers so ignore that one as we don't need to know about that because that got merged. So that's just me not waking up on time. And there's adding logregator related repos. Now that and that one has been closed. When did that get closed? No. Yeah, I brought maybe it was last week. I think I brought a big bringing orphans over. And so I went yes. through a bunch of the old PRs that were bringing other repos over in an old format. So I closed a bunch. Cool. So that's just me again being stuck on Tuesday too. All right. Um, have we got any other outstanding PRs of note that I've missed? Oh. Okay. So in that case, then over to Amelia. Yeah. So if you remember last week, or well, here I'll. Drop the oh, link. Good. Oh, thank you. Carson and I brought this RFC before you about the approval requirements. You, the two things that you, uh, the TOC asked for was for us to tag all the other working group leads, check, and to make a definition of, hey, what does a uh, like technical discussion look like? And so Carson added that as well. Um, and so I guess I'm kind of here to poke uh, on Ryan Moran's comment here. He said, you know, I'm interested to hear what the TOC thinks about this PR and the broader roles document, given the uh, Paquito right? working group special status as a separate project with its own governing structure. Um, so I'm curious to hear from the TOC. Do you want us to add a special carve out for them or not? I'm happy to do it either way. I'm guessing there'd be a lot of carve outs in a lot of places. So maybe it's not appropriate to add it here. It's appropriate to add it somewhere else. Is Ryan saying that the requirements are not strict enough for what Paquito wants to do? I'm not sure which way Ryan is leaning on this or his thoughts on it. I think he's saying they want the option to choose for themselves what they want to do. <laughs> I think in the in the working group charter they already reference uh, their own. Uh, governance and membership uh, rules uh, explicitly, and that one has been merged. So maybe that's sufficient. Uh, 
So no call out, do you think? Otherwise, you start to do that in every mm -hmm. so, uh, <laughs> It's an exception. It should not be the rule. And yeah, yeah, it's somehow difficult. we already have quite some exceptions for them, right? It's like now needing to add more and more exceptions for Picado would uh, raise the question of are they actually or do they want to be a CFF project, right? I mean, it's okay. Uh, and I agree with Stefan. It's it's in that um, in that charter already. It's the charter is basically delegating to. If you look for Pakedo working group information, look over there. I think that's um, that's enough. You're not audible, David. If you spoke to us. I was yelling at my child, but yes. Uh, okay, no problem. <laughs> I mean, I'm listening oh, to this conversation. I did yelling. <laughs> uh, yes, strongly worded. You need to not move that piano over where, there. Um, I, I, I mean, I guess one option we have is we can just leave the rules as stated per the the, the proposal here from Amelia and Carson, and then in the working group we can say like this is like a special working group that has done roles over there so like the rules appear to apply to that working group until you read the working group charter and then you realize they don't that's one option we can kind of leave that that can you know whatever tension in place right and not address it is one low conflict option. Mm. I think that that makes the most sense to me. Uh, there seem to be a lot of exceptions. So maybe if you're in that community, you know to go to their charter. Um, the other change that I made is that Greg opened up his own uh, RFC about how to like apply for the different roles. And so I kind of, we had like two sentences about that. I ripped that out and I'm just deferring to that RFC now. And if there's no further thoughts, what, remind me again what the next steps are? So you, you've open, you've in your open comment phase, so there's then putting it into your week of final comment where you're proposing to either adopt or reject this decision. When it's TOC rubber stamping, and after seven days, it provided this quorum there, away you go. If you get majority, merge it in, in in advance. Great. So it seems like I think all we can comment and resolve Ryan Rand's concern, and then we'll put it into final comment mode. Thank you for reminding me. No problem. Uh, and j just because we spoke about that, and David that had already approved that thing. Um, last week, I guess it's now it's up for actually approving it, right? I mean, there's no problem in not like we will wait for another week for like or until we have five approvals, right? And then that's fine. Would have been fine already last week, so I see no problem. Like approval uh, for for these things doesn't mean you can merge it with one, right? It's like. Yep, you got it. Okay. Do we have anything else or on that? I think we're all, all good. Is there anything I'm missing? Okay. Uh, so uh, then we, we've got uh, uh, any other business section, which uh, Ram's added a couple of bits in already to kick us off. So uh, take it away whenever you're ready, Ram. Yeah, so the first um, item I had there was just a general reminder to try and fill in the PR worksheet, the other kind of PR, obviously. <laughs> um, so I see that someone has had um, the time to put in a few inputs, so much appreciated. Um, I know that there's a... There's a discussion pending about these things. Um, so it's got into a bit of scheduling hell. <laughs> so a lot of lot of time off, lot of so, 
so there's covid there's pto um, there's obviously time zones so between all of these it's been scheduled for the 29th of the month so like a couple of fridays from now uh, but then in the meantime if folks you know wake up in the middle of the night and think that hey this is what should the messaging should look like uh, please feel free to add that to the document so that's uh, that's the one thing so getting remind getting some inputs async is you know also a good way to keep mm -hmm. pushing this thing forward um, and once again i wanted to just reiterate that we don't have a date for this release um, not even like a ballpark one so uh, we've always been saying you know a couple of weeks from now which seems to be like uh, we're very consistent with you know we'll be ready in a couple of weeks uh, if we can change that to something uh, less relativistic and more absolute um, it would uh, it would do a lot of good for planning some of these uh, release activities uh, the other note i had yeah sorry I was going to say, I guess that date's got to really come from the working group because yep. uh, they'll know when, when they're, they're finished. Absolutely. Uh, the other note I had there was uh, more of a reminder for Chris um, about TOC elections coming up. Chris, you want to uh, take that? Yeah. So this is um, somehow it's already, um, you know, mid late April and uh, it turns out uh, we'll be having TOC elections for three of the five states um, in May and June, uh, looking back at the, the cadence from last year. So I just thought it would be a good time to remind you all about that um, as it's kind of coming up fairly quickly. Um, I, uh, you know, I'll be digging into this in the next couple of weeks, make sure everything's uh, set for, you know, the announcement of the election sometime in May um, and then beginning of June. Um, we'll start the actual uh, ballots and, and the actual election. And then uh, looking back at last year, the election closed on June 15th. I'm not sure if it'll match up exactly like that, but it'll be approximately that time. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's been a year of our inaugural TOC. And um, one thing that I'll, I think in the next um, couple of weeks, I, I'd love to you know connect with all of you individually and just um, get some feedback on how this has gone um, and if there's other ways that the CFF could be supporting you all. Um, I, you know, I'd love to hear about that. Um, also get a sense, um, you know, if, if people are uh, planning on, on running again, um, you know, be, I'd be curious to know about that. Um, but yeah, I just want to get general feedback on how this whole first year has gone. I think in generally, um, things have gone really well and you, you've all done a lot of, you know, really great work. Um, and, you know, overhauling the technical governance of, a, of an open source project this big with this much like history of, of doing things in different ways um, is, is, uh, is no small feat. So um, I think it's, uh, you all have made a, a lot of progress in the last year. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you all individually, the TOC members. Um, just to try and catch up for 30 minutes, maybe this week or next, um, and get some feedback on things. Um, but yeah, ultimately just wanted to remind you all that that's coming up pretty soon. So in a few weeks, we'll, we'll have an announcement about the 2022 uh, TOC elections. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Cool. Um, we did have a vague mention of trying to sort out some software to run the election this time. I haven't even dug into that yet. Um, I've, I've reviewed the, what it says in the charter, but yeah, I haven't thought about the logistics. But the, the last election, um, you know, I I tabulated the the people that were eligible to vote using various metrics, but I didn't. Run, but Chip did most of that. So this will be my first time running the actual election. I'm not particularly nervous about that. I think it'd be fine, but, um, but I'll have to dig into that a bit more. And yeah, as far as the actual software for the voting, um, I, I haven't really looked at that yet, but um, it's something I'll do in the next couple of weeks. There's something that I think Giuseppe used for uh, voting on the logo. Maybe we can just reuse that. Kind of Condor set or yeah, there's a couple of things. Yeah. Yeah, I'll look at it, all that in the next, next week or two. 
Okay, cool. Uh, has anyone got anything else for any other business? I, I, I'm just going to add one small thing. I may ask someone else to chair next week's meeting. I should be able to join, but I might be joining from a slightly inconvenient spot where I don't have multiple screens to coordinate things. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you know via Slack how that goes. But if, if nobody else has anything for this week, then um, I suggest we, we gain a bit of time back. Right. That was good. Thanks. Thanks, Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.